Next, I want to uh, point out an important classification of stars that was realized at the beginning of the 20th century. I want to talk about so-called uh, HR diagram or Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. It was uh, established independently by Einar Hertzsprung in 1911 and Henry Norris Russell in 1913. What you do, you take a star cluster or you take several su such clusters. And for each star in the cluster or in a set of clusters, you measure in the ways we discussed their surface temperature and their luminosity. Okay, so here is the temperature, surface temperature, and luminosity of the star. And you represent each star on this two-dimensional plot by a point. The coordinates of the point are the surface temperature of the star. For this star, this would be the surface temperature, and this would be the luminosity. And you do that for every star in the cluster. Now note that for historical reasons, the temperature is increasing in this direction. And luminosity is increasing as usual, up. OK? And so you represent uh, on this luminosity temperature diagram each star by a point, the coordinates of that point are the temperature, the surface temperature and the luminosity of the star. And when you do that, when you do that for a cluster or any number of clusters, the typical result looks like this. There are three main groupings of stars, as you can see here. So here again, the temperature runs this way, the luminosity runs this way. One group of stars runs diagonally, okay? From high luminosity and high temperature down to low luminosity and low temperature. This is so-called main sequence group of stars. And our sun happens to be the main sequence star at the present moment. And it's kind of in the middle of the main sequence. Its surface temperature is about 6,000 degrees, right? And its luminosity is one because luminosity is given here in terms of the solar luminosities. So this is the main sequence group. And in fact, it turns out that 90%, over 90% of the stars that we observe belong to this main sequence group. The second group is this one in the upper right corner. It's upper, meaning they are very luminous, but it's right. The temperatures are low. And we know from Stefan Boltzmann's law that you can get high luminosity with low surface temperature only if the radius of the star is very large. Here is our friend Betelgeuse. So we know that these stars here uh, are uh, very luminous in spite of uh, the fact that they are cool because they have large radii and therefore they are giants, they are red giants, okay? And then we have this third group of stars that are dim have low luminosity, but very hot surfaces, right? Anywhere between 15 and 30,000 degrees Kelvin, right? Remember, temperature, surface temperature of the sun is 6. Now, again, from the Stefan Boltzmann's law, we have that they have low luminosity in spite of high temperature because their radii are small. The luminosity scales with the square of the radius, and the fourth power of temperature, okay? So in spite of the fact that they are very hot and the luminosity scales with the fourth power of the temperature, uh, they are dim, they have low luminosity precisely because their radii are tiny. A typical white dwarf 
uh, and that's how we call these stars, has a radius uh, uh, comparable to the radius of the Earth, which is about 110 times smaller in size than the Sun. Okay, so now I also want you to uh, uh, realize one thing, and that's where students make a mistake. They think that if the two points representing two stars are close on this so-called HR diagram, that they are also close in real space. No, 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 no. All that means is that they have similar temperatures and luminosities, but they could be on the opposite side of uh, the given cluster. So keep that in mind, the fact that two stars uh, are represented by the points that are close on HR diagram uh, does not mean that they are close to each other in a real space. All that means is that their luminosities and temperature, temperatures have uh, similar values. All right? So when you do that, again, the luminosity runs this way. It increases from lower end to the higher end. But for historical reasons, the temperature increases from right to left. And when you end up doing this, you end up with three groups of stars, main sequence, then stars that are very luminous but cool. They are red giants. They have high luminosity and a low surface temperature. And the third group are those uh, that are uh, dim and very hot. And they are called white dwarfs low L and high T. And as I mentioned before, over 90% of all stars that we observe are the main sequence stars. And our sun is a main sequence star. Okay, in interpreting uh, the HR diagram, Keep in mind uh, the Stefan Boltzmann law. Which says that the luminosity is some universal constant times the radius squared. That's because luminosity is proportional to the surface area of the source. If the source is spherical, like the stars are, then if the surface area is proportional to the radius of the star squared and the surface temperature to the fourth power. So in the case of white dwarfs, you can have very low luminosity with high surface temperature because their radius is very small. In the case of uh, red giants, uh, you have high luminosity with low surface temperature because their radii are huge. So they can compensate for low T by having a very large R. 